for example, uh, product photo improvement, we're going to try improving this lightbox photo of Alan. She took this photo using just a simple and expensive lightbox from Amazon with an iPhone 14, just the regular camera, no edits done to it, and no additional lighting except for the LEDs that were in there. And it looks as you'd expect. It gives us a good starting point, but it has some issues, and we are going to fix those. And so we're going to start out. We've got this background photo. I'm going to double click that. I'm just going to rename it original. Let's see. We're going to duplicate this layer. And I noticed this, this photo is four thirds, and it like really, it comes really too close up at the top to the box. I don't like that. So we're going to try and fix that first. We need a good starting point. We're going to say image canvas size, height's 4,000. We'll just bump that up to 4,500. 4, I like to always make my product photos square, make my life easy. So we're going to do that. Now that I've done that, I create an issue. I've got all this extra space back here. So I'm going to hit uh, my magic wand tool, hit select, and then we're going to do, well, there's a few ways we could do this. We're going to click edit, fill, content aware. Let's see how this goes. And ideally it, okay, good, really good but not perfect. And so we're just gonna go up there and fix. We're gonna select that guy and do content aware again. There we go, done. We've got that fixed. And this was like a little weirdness over here. This is like the blend line it created. And so we'll just select that and have it try again. Shift delete is the keyboard shortcut I'm using here to bring up fill. There we go, that looks much better, okay. So now we're in a better starting point. I'm gonna grab the spot healing brush because there's like a, that's a hair, like a little piece of dust. There's a hair in there. Big old spot up here, I don't like that. We'll get rid of those. All right, already things are looking better, cleaner. Got more room to work here. Now I've given us a big canvas to work with. We're gonna use filter, camera raw filter. I love this tool. Go down to geometry and hit auto. Look at that, isn't that cool? So she had the camera like a little at the right height, but slightly angled. And so you can see it, You by looking at the box, it's able to figure out the geometry and fix it ever so slightly. I love that. And then at the top, there's this auto button. We're gonna hit that too. Ooh. Okay, maybe a little much, I don't love it. So we're gonna undo that and stick with our auto geometry. Under optics, sometimes it'll let you, um, it'll know the camera and lens you used and it'll fix it, but I don't see that as an option here. We're gonna hit okay. And so here we could say, all right, fixes a little bit of that, but just gives a nice straight line on that box, I like that. What should we do to our friend Ken? I'm sorry, our friend Alan next. He's Ken's buddy. All his clothes fit him, or all Ken's clothes fit him. All right. I need to clean up this background. And to do that, we need to get Ken off this background. So let's do layer duplicate again. And now let's try, at the bottom it gives us a tool for select subject or remove background. Let's just try it. It doesn't always work, but when it does, it's cool. And so it didn't quite work because it misunderstood what it was looking at in a fairly amusing way. So I'm just gonna delete the layer mask it creates. Corrected. Just name those. So now we need a better way to get rid of the background. And so select, uh, remove background didn't work. Maybe select subject will, no, it didn't give me the same thing. Hit deselect. So we need a better way to do it if that doesn't work. Up here on our, our magic wand tool, if you change it to object selection tool, this is super cool. And hover over something, I could click it 
So now I've selected that guy, but what about the rest? If you hold down shift, you see the plus sign that goes on the cursor? Now I can add, I can add that in there. Shift, I can add the box. And then I can add the book. There, that worked really well. It worked very nicely. And if I want to modify it, you could do select, modify, smooth. If it's like jagged, you could smooth it out. That'll happen on low res images. Expand, I can make it a little bigger. Uh, contract, I can make it smaller. And then feather, you could soften the edge on it. But I'm going to do expand one pixel. And now in the bottom, I'm gonna hit uh, the layer mask button. And then if I turn off my other layers, Look at that. That is just perfect. And then comparing them like this, I could see something weird happens. Watch this. You can see like part of the stand disappears and it adds a little highlight around his feet. So I could fix that. And the way I'm going to do it is select this, the layer mask. I'm just going to go and paint the mask. So if I select my layer mask, I switch to the brush tool. Let's see how big is that? That's perfectly fine size for this. We're gonna make sure it's set to white. White will paint, will make the mask transparent. Black will make it opaque. So we're just gonna fix his feet there. See that fixing it right up. Just gotta be real careful to get this one. Let's move real slow. There we go. Looks good. That's fine. Let's just compare again. Cool, cool, cool. Let's back out of it. So I've got my background on there. Now what does this look like if I just do put them on a solid white background? I could do color overlay on the layer that's behind him. Just 100% white. So there we can see if we just do all white, what he looks like. I don't love it because it makes it look like he's floating a little bit. And so maybe we turn it down some. So we just like brighten that background. And we get some of our shadows are still in there. I like that. But I still want this background to be more white. And so I'm going to use my gradient tool. My gradient tool, if you click basics, let's just reset my colors. That's what that black white button does. I want white first. My gradient tool, I'm going to go basics. Just select white to transparent. You could change the way the gradient works. I want the first one, just regular gradient. And then I'm going to click and drag with my gradient tool. It shows me where the halfway point is. I want the halfway point to be about where I think that border is. There we go. And there you can see what that does. So it adds that back there. But I don't want it to be like white, white. It's not believable. So I'll change my opacity to 90. Let's give it a little subtle. Okay. I think now we're getting somewhere. But with that, I want to turn my color overlay down. Go with 40%. All right. This is improved. I like it but I still think we could do better on Alan. So let's duplicate this layer again. And we're gonna play with our tools. We could do auto tone. All right, made him a little brighter. I'm gonna keep that. Auto contrast, no change, so I'll just leave it. Auto color. Auto color appears to have improved the tone. Undo. Yeah, he's like a little yellow there. Auto color. It does give it better color, but maybe I don't want to do it all the way. I can hit edit fade color. It'll let you fade the last step. So I can do 50%, 80%. That looks right. 10. Oh, a little weird. Let's go with 75. Hit OK. Let's turn that on and off. All right, just nice color improvements there. And there's still a few more auto stuff we could do. We can adjustments levels, auto. 
It made my shadows too dark. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do on that one is fade levels. I'm going to switch it to mode lighten. So now it's 100%, but it's only going to lighten it, not darken it. And we'll just turn it down, 75. And we can also do images, cur we can do adjustments, curves. And these are all going to have different effects. You know, just play with them, try them, see what you like. If you don't like something, undo it. Curves, I think, is fine. We'll hit OK. Now let's compare. All right, some nice improvements there. But I still want to improve some shadows. So let's do camera raw filter. And under basic, I can do white balance, auto. Oh, that looks good. Oh my gosh. Cool. We'll stick with that. Exposure. Maybe we brighten it a little bit. Bring that up 0.15. Shadows. That's I definitely I want to bump my shadows. Plus 10. Okay. But I don't want this thing to look like really blown out. Like that box just turns like it turns bright orange. So we're gonna set vibrance. Minus four. And I like that. I think that looks good. We'll just turn saturation down a tiny bit. It's a vintage product. You know, with another product, you may want to go the other direction, make it more vivid. In this case, I want to make it warmer and a little less, less vivid bright. Okay. And then let's hit R O K. Okay. Yeah, all right, that really brightened it up. Okay. I like this. This is good. So I selected all my layers. I hit um, Command E. We'll merge layers. Now if we turn it on and off, we can see. New. Old. New. Old. All right, that's improved. That looks good. I like that a lot. One more thing. If we hit uh, Sharpen. You could just sharpen the overall image. And here we'll duplicate our layer first. And let's zoom in. You know, depending on the camera you use, you may not want to do this. Like an iPhone camera already does some pretty crazy sharpening. Sharpen. Ooh, look at that. You could really see that texture come out on the shirt. That looks nice. But then it also brings out all this noise, this film grain. So a different option, you hit layer, duplicate layer. They have this option, sharpen, sharpen edges. And if we turn that on and off, sharpen edges, less severe. Like if you look in the hair on the box, you can see it sharpening. But it's not necessarily going to sharpen everything the way the other one does. And depending on what you're taking a photo of, one will be better than the other. I liked the regular Sharpen, and so that's what I'm going to go with. Filter. Sharpen. Good. Now, I wonder if we can get rid of some of the noise that appears in here. If I say filter, noise, reduce noise. Yeah, you could say in the preview takes out some of that that noise. We'll just hit OK. All right. Now if we back out. Ooh, much nicer. Looking good, Alan. And then finally, let's play with their new AI filters. They call them neural filters. And they give you a bunch here, but the ones we want for product photography are um, if you had to like download this photo from a manufacturer, from your Shopify store, maybe it's looking a little stepped on, you can attempt JPEG artifacts removal. I probably set it to medium. In this case, I don't think that's necessary. We're going to turn that off. And you can also try photo restoration. Photo restoration is cool. It's meant for like you have a scan of an old photo, but it'll work on everything. And we're going to set photo enhancement to 40. Scratch reduction, we're just going to bump that to 5, real minor. 
uh, probably not necessary, but what it's going to end up doing is taking some of the scratches out of the box. And then just for amusement's sake, I've left Enhanced Face turned on because it thinks it's found a human face in here, and I want to see what, like, nightmare AI thing it does to us. So the result came out pretty good. And if we zoom in on his face, watch this. If we turn it off, look at his face. That's like the original photo. And then with it on, it really, it adds some extra detail in there. It tries to smooth it out. Now for a product photo, you may not want it perfect because it needs to represent what the actual product is like. So in this case, we're going to turn enhance face off. And then when it's done processing, we'll apply that. And then here we'll compare. Very nice. Oh yeah, the scratch reduction had some unintended effects, but it works. Check that out. On, off, on, off. So our photo restoration, you know, in this case didn't help us, but still a neat tool. Uh, and if you've got really stepped on photo, might be worth trying. So we'll leave that off. And it, sometimes less is more. You can really keep over-optimizing. So we're probably going to stop here. But I think that's, that's pretty nice. And then as a demo, you can use, use these tools to remove entire things pretty easily. So I'm going to go, let's try the polygon lasso tool. And we're just going to draw around the box. And we're going to say generative fill and generate. And this is just a different way to remove objects. This one uses AI. So we'll see what it does. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what it thinks it added there, but interesting and it managed to match it to his shirt so we're gonna hit edit undo on that instead we'll do shift delete content aware whoops content aware go and there you go it's gone so if i want it to just be like that it did it perfectly worked very nicely now that i've got that cleared out we could use generative ai to try and add something in here. Like generative fill, add a pink dollhouse, generate. There, <laughs> look at that, kind of cool. And it gives you multiple options, like two, oh. Neat, not quite Barbie's dream house, but not terribly far off either. All right, we're going to turn that off, go back to our original. I think this looks good, so I'm just going to hit layer, flatten image, and I'm going to say file, export, and you can do save as JPEG, do save for web. And assuming you're saving this for Shopify, we'll just set our image size to 2500, leave optimize checked, embed the color profile, why not? And for quality, I'm going to leave it at 60. It's still a 400K JPEG. And our theme in Shopify should resize the product photo appropriately. So I just want to give it a good high-res image to work with. But it doesn't need to be excessive. Call this one. Edit. Save. Done. There we go. We have really cleaned this up. If we want our original. There we go. Not bad. Thanks for watching.